It is estimated that here in Africa, the age of farmers is 50 years and above. And so we are encouraging a lot of young people to go into farming. This week on the Ghani Farmer, we tell the story of a young engineer who has resigned from his profession and taken on vegetable farming here in the central region, precisely in a community called Butuata. So the Ghanaian farmer is here to chit chat with him. He is mainly into greenhouse and open field and he produced different varieties of vegetable. What you see right behind me is a different type of habanero. I'm sure you've seen a couple of habanero videos on the channel, but this one is a different variety. So let's go and meet Gabriel Bunsu, who is the CEO of Evergreen Acre Farms, to chat out with him and find out about the journey. How long has it been doing this? What has been the drive? Why would he even resign from his engineering career to become a full-time farmer? An interesting story. If this is your first time on my channel, please subscribe and share the link. Let a friend know about the Ghanaian farmer. But for now, follow me. Let's go into the greenhouse. I'm told he's doing a few works over there. Let's go and meet him and have fun. <music> joining me once more on the evergreen acre farms in the central region precisely in a community called Buduata Junction. Here when you walk in you see greenhouse and also other crops being planted on the open field. Now the most interesting part or the owner of this farm is he has resigned or abandoned his profession as a computer engineer. Hey I can imagine his salary every month and he <laughs> decided to become a full-time vegetable farmer, a very young man. Now let's interact with him and find out how long he's ventured into this journey, what has been the shortfalls, what has been the success stories, why is he be practicing greenhouse and open field. And we have Mr. Gabriel Bunsu here. He is also an activist, very strong one for climate change on social media. So thanks for joining me once again. And thanks for having us um, here. But let's begin with your land size. How yeah. many acres of land do you have? So we are on a 50 acre land um, here in Buduata. And uh, we do have other lands in other um, places. Okay. We have 361 acres in Apam. Okay. And we have a thousand acres in Mafe yet to be developed. Too. Right. Yeah. But here is. But here 50. is a 50 acres. Okay. Yeah. And I realize that you have greenhouses. Yeah. And you also practice the open, open field. field. Yeah. Why do you practice both systems on the land? Okay, so with the greenhouses, we just wanted um, a new method of growing vegetables for the export market okay. and um, doing the open field on a larger scale, also for the export market and the um, local market. Okay. That's why we ventured into two. Right. Yeah. How many years has it been since you resigned as a computer engineer to become a full-time It's farmer? been five years now. Five years? Yeah, five professionally. Years now, professionally. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, run me through some of the um, vegetables you produce on your farm. Um, so, we do produce habaneros. Mm -hmm. We have garden eggs, right. um, the local and aubergines. Yeah. And uh, we do have orange. We do have grapefruits. We do have coconuts. We do have okra. Um, sweet pepper, onions, beetroots, uh, red cabbage. So we do almost some um, other vegetables to turia, mm -hmm. uh, tender, yeah. also for the export market. I see. Yeah. What went into the selection of each of these vegetables that you mentioned? What went into it? Is it the uh, market demand or this? What went into that decision? Um, well, with vegetables, you really check the demand. Mm -hmm and the uh, consumption, yeah. local and the export market. Okay. So which one is favorable for you as a farmer? Mm. Which one can you produce mm. to have your returns mm. um, quickly, mm. you know, and you venture into it. So okay. 
okay. that depends and also on the season mm-hmm. yeah and when um certain particular seasons we don't um grow certain crops we just venture into a different ones mm. so yeah all right so i have done a few chilies yeah. and i've done a few habaneros yeah. on my channel yeah but this particular one mm-hmm. looks a bit bigger bigger the yeah. one i did was a very small, small one ones. yeah so what variety is this this one is the big sun big sun as yeah. in normal sun normal sun area. okay yeah. okay so this is so, the big sun variety yeah, this is the big sun variety and it could grow bigger than this oh really yeah so when it's in its um pre-stage uh-huh. of fruiting uh-huh. it's bigger than this okay. and with the right nutrients mm. um given to it mm. it can grow bigger okay so yeah. tell me the process of producing big sun okay where where do you get your seed your source yeah. of seed is very important yeah your source of seed. so with a big sun mm-hmm. we rather import it from okay. the states right it's not common over here so you don't get a lot of people having big sun okay yeah and uh we do have an importer um who pro- provided who, who for provides you. it okay for us. so yeah. when you have the seeds yeah. um what do you do to the seed so with the seeds it's already in a can okay so we nest them mm-hmm. uh, to wait for it to germinate mm-hmm. so after germination that's within three weeks to a month mm. then we prepare our greenhouses our yeah. domes yeah. and we do the transplanting okay yeah. sometimes we do it in the greenhouse mm-hmm. sometimes do we do it on the open field we have a section we do it on your open field. Is it field. possible to do nursery in open field yeah. and do the and main production in greenhouse? In greenhouse. It's possible. Very possible. Okay. Yeah. It's possible. It's, it's the first time possible. I'm hearing that you it's can do possible. greenhouse outside. Yeah. Uh, so um, you can do nursery outside, outside and do production here. Inside. All right. Yeah. So after four weeks, yeah, it is grown enough, enough for transplanting. For transplanting. Yeah. Now, that's one unique thing I also saw here when I came. Most of the greenhouses are gone. They are either using cocoa peats exactly. for the production, <laughs> or you will see them using a black polythene to cover the entire floor and then just dig holes where the plants will be shooting. But what I saw here in Evergreen Acre Farm, they just prepare the bed like we do for normal open, open field. field and do the planting. What style is this, and why are you practicing this one? So. For me, as a scientist, mm. I love experimenting and okay. um, different things. And because we have a modern establishment, yeah. we try to tweak things okay. to suit our environment. Right. So in other places, like you said, they do it in the cocoa pit. Mm. And with the cocoa pit, mm-hmm. immediately you're done with it, you throw them away. Mm. Or going through recycle, it takes a longer period mm. so we chose a different method mm. which is ours so some of the domes we have it in the trashes mm. which is the um, black okay. um, trusses and with these ones most of it is done on ground mm. and we've done the beds like the open field mm. main reason why because we want the plants to get direct nutrients okay. also from the soil like the other micronutrients yeah. directly from the soil mm. so that we don't spend so much on production cost when okay. it comes to um, chemicals, um, fertigation and uh-huh. all that. Yeah. All right. In that case, after the four weeks, yeah. when you are ready to transplant yeah. into the greenhouse, tell me what you do to prepare the bed. Um, this one, Fata cannot come here. Exactly. So you use the hole. So hole. we have a rotavator, a okay. greenhouse rotavator. Mm-hmm. So it tills the land. Mm. And um, if you don't have it, you can use the normal holes. Mm. So you can dig the hole mm-hmm. to make the sand very porous. Okay. And after that, you can really align and lay the beds in there. So you have a specific intervals that you use to lay your beds. Tell me yeah. how long is the bed and what are the, um, the length as well? Okay, so this is um, three foot okay. um, with the width is mm. three foot. And how long it is, it goes um, 84 centimeters. Okay, so on each bed, how many plants, or in total, how many yeah. plants do we have here? In total, we have a thousand seven hundred plants, thousand seven hundred, thousand eight hundred, depending on the interval, the spacing. Mm. So in some domes, mm-hmm. it's thousand eight hundred, mm-hmm. and in some domes too, it's double. Okay. Yeah. So okay. we it's planted on the size, it on of, the the size of the greenhouse. Okay. Um, what time of the day is is time for me to transplant? Yeah. What time of the day do I go approaching all my energy before bringing it bringing it inside you do it 
early in the morning okay in the morning if your um, greenhouse everything is prepared mm -hmm. well early in the morning mm -hmm. you go mm -hmm. you make sure the bed is wet mm -hmm. so you can make sure you wet the bed mm -hmm previous night before early in the morning okay. so that the bed doesn't dry okay. and it makes it easier for uprooting mm. and after that between from seven to nine mm. i'm sure you should be done with the your planting. transplanting yeah. okay all right so on each bed mm. how many plants am i supposed to so on each bed you can have 75 to 80 80 plants 80 plants all right so after that transplanting how long does it take for me to start seeing the flowering seeing the flowering it takes another month okay yes um in the greenhouse it takes another month mm. um for the flowers to start mm. coming up so within six weeks mm. in total you start having your first fruits mm. after transplanting okay so when i do my transplanting within the period of uh, another four weeks, four weeks and I start exactly. see, before I see my flowers, flowers yeah. do you water the plant? Exactly. Do you give it fertilizer? Exactly. What care do I give it? So after doing your transplant, mm -hmm. you have to water it mm -hmm. consistently. Mm -hmm. So that's day and night, mm -hmm. which is in the greenhouse, even greenhouse and open field, because most vegetables like um, water, yeah. you know, that makes the fruits much more bigger. Okay. So you um after transplanting you give it consistent water mm. for four weeks okay. and um, after the first week of transplanting you wait and you then start giving your fertigation okay. you know you start applying your fertigation and right. your plant nutrients okay. so, yeah. in some of the greenhouse the water the tub is open and exactly. then it sprinkles exactly here i see your uh, we irrigation have a, this thing is lying the tube, on. Okay. yeah is on so how does your work? So ours we, we have a drip okay. and we have the shower, okay. which is so this one is what? There's the shower. The shower. There's the shower okay. in there. The main reason why we use the shower so mm. that there will be more water in for the ground to be very cool. Cool. So when the ground is cool, it cools the greenhouse. Uh -huh. Exactly. Okay. The, if you use drip, yes. it has a limited um water, you know, um flow. Okay. So when the heat is in, mm. you really get a whole lot of mm. heat mm. combusted into the greenhouse. Okay. Is there any um, disease that worries? What do you call the variety again? Big sun. Ah, same big sun. <laughs> <laughs> is there any disease or insects that worries big sun uh, pepper? Yeah, okay. these are the normal um, pepper disease, mm. uh, which are trips, mm -hmm. aphids, mm. and um, other. Um, Caterpillars, okay. you know, grasshoppers okay. die. All right, so how do I prevent it? Um, with inside the greenhouse, mm. compared to the open field, yes. over here you don't use so much pesticides. Okay. Inside you don't use so much pesticide mm. because it's already secured. Yeah. But from time to time, mm. sometimes these insects mm. sneaks in yeah. whilst you are coming in mm. on your clothes and everything. So for two, three weeks, mm. when you start seeing some mm. symptoms. Mm -hmm you know like what you have in here then you have to start spraying okay exactly okay. and uh, we have other um synthetic um insecticide mm. that you're supposed mm. to use if you want organic mm -hmm. uh, pesticide mm. you can choose the mm. organic one to spray on it okay so finally how many weeks cra cra mm. then i can start harvesting because i can see you're having some exactly so with the big sun yeah within six weeks you you can start harvesting six weeks yeah after transplanting you can start harvesting. you can start harvesting okay so how many times in a week Ooh. can i move in here and do my so harvest? you can do twice. twice we do harvest twice in a week every Over here. every week okay twice a week which is on mm. mondays mm -hmm. and thursdays okay that's when we do our harvest how long will you keep harvesting fruit on this plant for before you consider it that it is overgrown so i need to cut everything off and replant when everything. you start um considering that when you realize that uh -huh. your fruit level is low it's dropping, it's dropping okay. then you can think that okay is it still favorable mm. if you see the market is still there yeah. and it can still go longer yeah. you can let it be longer so that you can be preparing your next patch nursery yeah. before you clear them okay. so yeah it depends on okay um in the market yeah we have the smaller like i told you the kakushto exactly so we have the small ones and yeah. then this one yeah which one do the women like more so with this with this one uh -huh. 
it was new to the market new very new to okay. the market all they knew was the local capusito yes. and the other peppers mm. so we introduced this mm -hmm. to the market um a year and a half ago mm. that's when we introduced mm. this to the market the difference is this is way hot it is because i can feel it way hot mm. than any the other peppers yeah on oh, okay. the on the market okay. and with this, you just need only just one mm. to prepare your whole soup. Yeah, so, exactly. And yes, she and yes, <laughs> Okay, so um, how many sacks or is mm. it kilos yeah. you harvest from this? If I should bring my basket right now. Okay, so in a week, yes, you can harvest almost like um, four sacks mm. from one one greenhouse. Dome. Exactly. Oh, okay. At its um, peak. Yeah. Yeah. When you follow the right procedures uh -huh. and everything. You can have like four sacks in a week from one dome. Sometimes you can even have as like three sacks a day. Okay. So in a week you can have like five or six sacks. I see. Exactly. Do you have a fair idea of the cost? Yes. Do you saw in kilos or how do you do the So right now uh -huh. um we supply to the local market. Yeah. So we do have a pricing yes. for the bags. Okay. So per the number four sack bag mm -hmm. for all other farmers mm. to know the number four sack bag right now the price is woven around like a 900 cities a bag uh, what are, <laughs> do you have the sack who was sack no home. exactly okay so if you was we'll be going on a quick read that when we come back i'll let you see the particular sack let them see exactly when it's full mm -hmm. uh-huh it's going for somewhere on 900, 900. and mm. during the dry season mm -hmm. During rainy season, yeah. it's moving around that side because okay. there's more yeah, in, the in the market. Okay. But during the dry season, that price patch, it can go as high as 2000 2500 hey, yeah. Now I'll be coming to... Uh, like, <laughs> now you'll be coming here. We'll come in there dry because money will be here. <laughs> okay, exactly. so um, about the selling. Yeah. Um, do the women come or you deliver? so we deliver mm. some of sometimes the uh, market women come around mm. especially those who live around mm. here when they know that mm. it's time for mm -hmm. fruiting they come around okay. yeah so we have a particular market um the kaswa mm. and the agogloshi okay. women so they really know here right. so yeah we so sometimes we supply to them at dawn okay. 3 a.m mm, it is gone it is gone all right so viewers you're still watching the Ghanaian mm. farmer my name is enyona Mane. If this is your first time on this channel, please subscribe and share the link. In the year 2024, I'll make sure I engage a lot more young farmers to promote their works and effort because we are encouraging more young people to go into farming. We've done a lot of matured farmers. We've done a lot of commercial farmers. Now we have a lot yes, of young people do. who are moving into the space. Mm -hmm. Let's tell uh, their story, okay. the contributions they are making, the jobs they are creating and many other exciting and insightful stories i'll be sharing on this platform so i'm going for a quick bit that when i come back i'll be showing you the bag and then we'll talk about the lifespan of this uh fruit when you harvest it how do i keep it and at what temperature do i keep it to still keep the freshness and every other detail of course cost of production i'm sure you come after me and you know you didn't ask him how much it costs to produce I will be asking that and more. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. For staying, if you're just tuning in, you're watching The Ghanaian Farmer, and our focus is on habanero, specifically the variety called Big Sun don't confuse it we have a lot of habaneros but each one has a name or a variety and this one is called big sun so whilst we're going for a break i told you when we are back he mentioned size four size five i need you to see the pricing that he mentioned that when it's in season it's likely or hovering around 900 ghana cd per sack but when it's not in season, when it becomes scarce in the market, it can go as far as 2,000 Ghana CD in the market. So as it stands now, is it in season? Um, we had some of the pepper that came from the north. Okay. Yes, so the price has now dropped, dropped. a bit. Okay. But in the next two weeks, mm -hmm. three weeks, mm. 
the price will just shoot it up. It will again. shoot up again. It can even shoot up by next week. Okay. Yeah. Who knows? Because right. we don't know the quantity that's mm. coming from the mm. milk now. Okay. So All right. So this one, when you have it, yes. how do I keep it? I mean, the lifespan so that it still maintains the freshness mm. and I get value for money. Yeah. So with this one, when you harvest it mm -hmm. and you are home, mm -hmm. you can put it in your fridge. Okay. Which it can last for over a month okay. in the fridge, right. fresh. Okay. You can freeze it, mm. which can last like two months mm. in the fridge. Mm. But if you want it fresh mm -hmm. in the room temperature, mm. it can last from a week to two weeks. Okay. Still fresh uh -huh. before you see it wrinkling a bit. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you also mentioned, oh my goodness. So when it is for exports, when it's for export, it is packaged, it's in, this. packaged in this box. Oh, okay. So for export and mm -hmm. for some of the shops, mm -hmm. this is how we package it okay. and we give it to them. But if it's the market, if it's the open market, it goes, it goes in, in, this in the sack. sacks. Okay. Yeah. So is this the sack that you are able to get about how many? Four. You can get four, five, six in a week. In a week. Exactly. For the twice harvest. For the twice harvest. Oh, okay. Yeah. So All you right. can get three mm -hmm. a day from just mm -hmm. one dome, mm -hmm. and then the next harvest mm -hmm. you can get another three or two bucks mm. yeah okay now let's talk about cost of production yeah. for my viewers that is very <laughs> important to them exactly. um assuming i'm reaching out to evergreen acre farms that yeah. hey uh, i want you to just produce one dome yeah. for me only i'm yeah. investing into just one dome yeah. um the land if you are to leave the land for me yeah is this quarter an acre or half an acre? This quarter an acre. This quarter an acre. Yeah. But if I'm renting just a, a full acre, how much will it be here? Yeah. How much are you likely to lease um, it for? Well, I don't lease. No, it's business I'm doing. If you're doing business, uh -huh. um, for two years ago, uh -huh. that's when I started leasing yes. some of the domes. Mm. And I lease it for um, per quarterly, it's yes. like 4,000 cities. For the dome. For the dome. So you can yeah. lease the entire dome the to me. The entire dome to you. Four thousand. Four thousand per quarter. Is it just the dome? Just or the it dome. comes with the production. No, with production. Uh, just the dome. Okay. So <laughs> quarter means three or four months. Which is which? A quarter is four months. Four yeah, months. It's four months. So for four months, yeah. if I say that I want to do business with you, yeah. you give this to me for four thousand. Four thousand. Now let's talk about the exactly. The and with the production itself. <laughs> you would over around five to six thousand cities in production the whole thing including with uh -huh. your fertigation seed and, and seed uh -huh. and um, also with labor pesticide and labor six k six k it will take care of the plants the plants and everything everything okay so if this is going for 4k uh -huh. and the production is going for 6k yeah. so 10k for a quarter, which for is four quarter. months. Yeah, four months. Am I going to make that money and profit? You can make that in a week. Are you sure? <laughs> I, I, I am not the one saying it all. Yeah. It is Mr. Gabriel Bonso, <laughs> the computer engineer who is not a full-time farmer. He's saying that he can lease the dome for a quarter, which is four months, for 4K. That is 4,000 Ghana CD. And then for him to buy the seed, prepare the land, plant for you and labor i will make you see some of his workers and labor for the next uh four, four months, months it's also going for six thousand that will cater for everything so in total you're going to spend six uh ten thousand yeah. for everything and he's telling me that mm -hmm. you would make your money plus profit exactly is it possible very possible all right if that's the case then I guess we are in business, right? Exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, how will you describe the journey so far? This five years that you've been doing this? Whoa. It's, it's been very steady mm. learning, mm -hmm. a whole lot of learning. Okay. And um, a whole lot of ups and downs. Right. But very patient and rewarding okay. for the past five years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, your workers. Mm. When I came, I saw how you guys were having a nice conversation. Yeah and all that how do you go about selecting those who work on your farm and what relationship do you have, do you with, have them? with them um well the whole thing is we're trying to give jobs okay. uh, to people out mm. there especially the youth mm. i've had a couple of um, young people mm -hmm. working for me mm. um over the years yes. and had um, elder people to also working yes. for me over the years 
um, I choose people who have experience mm. in farming, mm. especially. And the younger ones are the people who really have uh, interest in agriculture. Okay. So they can come around and then we can train them on that. And okay. then they can also get hands-on skills. skills. Mm. And we also have permanent mm. and uh, external mm. labor. Mm. So during harvest, mm -hmm. we bring external labor so that it can be more, mm. so that the harvest um, can be way much more quicker. quicker. But maintenance and um, operations on the farm, we use skilled people to uh, handle all these. Okay. Crops. Why did you have to resign? Abandon your father has paid school fees for how many years? Four years in the university. Why did you have to abandon your work as a computer engineer yeah. to become a farmer? Well, um, I had the interest in farming when I was in school, mm. actually. Mm -hmm. But already I'm in engineering school, okay. so I decided um, to learn it whilst I'm in school, okay. start seeking for lands learn how to write my business proposals and all that. So it was like a preparation and a foundation stage that I was preparing myself for because mm. I knew what I wanted. Because mm -hmm. I realized that there's so much potential in the agriculture sector mm. where we've not even tapped in mm. compared to the West. Mm. We've not even tapped anywhere. Mm. So I, as an engineer, wanted to bring a change okay. and um, have more mechanized farming okay. with modernization, which is the greenhouses. Right. Uh, even introduce more hydroponic yes. ones, advanced greenhouses. Yes. Um, so that's the main reason why I try to venture into agriculture to add more um, value, add more sexiness. Into yeah, I know, right? I know, I know. <laughs> exactly. Okay, right. Um, farming is expensive. Very. It's not cheap. Yeah. Ever since you started investing yeah. in these greenhouses and yeah. everything, have you lost money? Yeah, we, we've we've lost some, especially when it comes with management. Okay. If you don't have the right people to manage your facility for you, you will go at a loss. Mm. But if you really focus on it and you manage it very well, you can be making some. But over the years, we've lost some quite amount, huge amount. And you, are not, you didn't get frustrated to give up? Well, it, it happens, okay. you know, but you always have to psych yourself. If you are really in the industry and you know the potential out of it, giving up is not supposed to be an option. Exactly. If you are tired, you can go for a break, yeah. you know, but always you have to come back and make sure you go harder, correct the mistakes that you did previously yeah. that ended you mm -hmm. at a loss. Mm. You know, when you do that correction yeah. consistently, you eventually make it. But 50 acres... And you have close to more than 10 uh, domes 24. of... 24. Exactly. Hello? <laughs> you have 24 domes yeah. of greenhouses and an open field. You have tractors. Yeah. Mr. Bonsu, who is funding <laughs> your farming journey? Well, Do you have uh, partners or is it family or yeah. you have investors? How is it going? So, all. Mm. All inclusive. So, my... Jenny started with family. Okay. So over here is was initially owned by my uncle. Okay. Yeah, he handled everything in there, and he's a bit old. Okay. So when he found out that I also had passion Interest. to in the agriculture sector, he was like, "Okay, my boy, come and take can over, take over, okay. handle everything, and right. also build yourself up from there." And within the five years, when I took over, then more gigs started coming, coming in had partners yes. that made me acquire the 361 mm. acres at a pump mm. we did maize and um, cassava yeah. and uh, we have now thousand acres of mafia yet to develop so okay. it's a bit of everything family right. support yeah. um also business partners that are in right i have encountered a lot of young people per the work mm. i do and when I meet them, they tell me, oh, I don't know, I'm into farming, or I want to go into farming. Mm. And I start asking them some basic questions. Mm. Have you registered a farm? Do you have an account in the name of a farm? Is the farm on social media? Do you have a book where you take your records? And they start stammering. <laughs> oh, I, 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 no, no, I'm on social media, my farm is not there. Mm. I'm yet. Mm. How do you make sure that you keep record of everything that happens on your farm mm. so you are able to give an accurate accountability to your financial partners mm. 
and they can build trust with you and keep mm. doing business how mm. are you managing that area of business? um well with business registration and everything i've built a brand mm. um over the years mm. that that's supposed to be even the fundamental mm. thing before you even start exactly. thinking about going into production yes. and when that is being prepared when it comes to bookkeeping most people don't take use of these um social media yes. and other bookkeeping applications yes. online yes. with me because i'm an engineer yes. open to that right. i have a whole lot of other um sites okay. i've developed even my own bookkeeping okay. um that Method, i keep right. i keep my mm. records on but some easier ones other people can use to keep their um, records keep everything day-to-day mm. -day activity mm. is quick right yeah so i have it on my laptop and i have it on my phone okay so even if i'm not on my um, desk at right. the office mm. and i'm on the field mm. i can quickly just update myself okay. everything okay there. why did you choose this type of um Greenhouse. Greenhouses. I can see there are some. Because I mean, who said it? So if this, I don't know. Your greenhouse look a bit different yes. than the no, ones other I see. normal ones. What yeah. is unique about this one? So with this type of greenhouse, it's called an Envardo. Okay. Yeah, and um, with this, it comes with its specifications. Okay. So per what the owner wants, mm -hmm. and they specify and they do the specifications, and they export it to you. Right. So with mine. What makes it different is we requested for UV and um, nets, okay. which siphons the bad heat out and brings in the good Fresh sunlight. Okay. Sunlight okay. in, and we opted for extractors, mm. which can take the heat out mm. during the day mm. and bring in um, cool mm. air. And also, if you really want to revamp it again, you can um, bring in electricity, mm. you know, and mount fans mm. in. To make it much more cooler okay exactly. all right so we are about wrapping mm -hmm. uh interview uh, it's been mm -hmm. very insightful and mm -hmm. very enlightening he's not an office farmer mm -hmm. he knows what is going on <laughs> on the field so he's able to i, I was <laughs> waiting for him to say oh Arthur, uh, come and answer the questions <laughs> for you now but i was imagining uh, he was able to answer me that has yeah. been very impressive so far we are wrapping up our interview mm. this is 2024 mm. for me i'm looking forward to having a lot more young women mm. in the area of farming yeah. so they can also take up the career exactly. take it to the next level exactly. um what message do you have to share to both young men young women who want to go into farming mm. and also the climate issues that mm. we are being confronted yeah. with are there any tips you are using to help yourself that you mm. can also share uh well with um, young farmers coming up mm -hmm. and especially like you said you helping young women mm. it has always been um, a priority over here on the mm. farm that we try to have more women mm. to part with the men in here mm. and um, use modern technologies we encourage more women to even handle tractors mm you know out there and with the young guys coming in it's patience mm. it's not a rush mm -hmm. it's not as if everyone is saying there's money in mm -hmm. agriculture mm -hmm. so everybody it's wants no to magic. go it everybody wants to go mm -hmm. in there you'll be disappointed yeah. in your first year mm -hmm. and you might think it's not rewarding mm -hmm. but it's patience consistency if you have it obviously you're going to win in there mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and climate issues how are you because i know you are a strong advocate <laughs> for climate how yeah. are you adjusting and applying all the sustainable farming yeah. practices that yeah. we are being encouraged to yeah. do to reduce the impact. Yeah. And well, I would say that's the main reason why we are even standing under mm. the greenhouse. Because mm. we wanted to change from the other traditional farming to this modernized mm. farming mm. where you can have more food produced on a smaller mm. um, acreage mm. of, of land and its quality. You know, and um, compared to even even in the open field, you need to use certain chemicals, okay. which is environmental friendly, friendly. You know that you can pollute um, the, the environment, soil, the soil, the and all that. And over here, I have a strict plas no plastic policy. Okay. So when I see plastic bags on the site, even with chemical bottles, I let them remove everything. Mm. We have a disposable chemical mm. bin in front of mm. the office so they put everything in mm. there and then yeah okay <laughs>
if you let me, I will talk the whole day. This young man, he will not go and sit down. So thank you very much. It's been very insightful, very, um, it's a new learning curve for me. For me, every day, I learn something new. So I'm sure that, don't see habanero like, oh, and you know, we have a lot of habanero. Hello, mm -hmm. this one is big sun. And of course, the, the, the planting method is different. That is what makes these videos unique. So when you see this today, don't say it is the same. And yet the same, the information are different. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for spending time with me. I will be spending some few days on this farm. So mm -hmm. you might see back-to-back -back videos from Evergreen Acre Farms here in Budwata. And the CEO is Gabriel Bonso. <laughs> the father is in the US. He's a Ungu. He's going to farm. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you some other time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. All right.